Hello everybody and thank you for joining us here at the Canyon City Public Library for another virtual story time. We like to start our story times off with our welcome song and it's sung to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and it goes, Oh welcome, welcome everyone, now you're here, let's have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone, now you're here, let's have some fun. Good job everyone. Thank you for joining us here again for another virtual story time. Hopefully everybody had an opportunity to see our virtual event yesterday. I still have not had enough Dr. Seuss, hence the Horton ears. And my fav one of my other favorite stories I'll be reading today, Horton Hatches the Egg by Dr. Seuss, published by Random House. Sighed Maisie, a lazy bird hatching an egg. I'm tired and I'm bored and I've got kinks in my legs from sitting just sitting here day after day. It's work, how I hate it. I'd much rather play. I'd rather take a, I'd take a vacation, fly far off for a rest. If I could find someone, just sit on my nest. If I could find someone, I'd fly away free. Then Horton the elephant passed by the tree. Hello, called the lazy bird smiling her best. You have nothing to do and I, need a, and I need a rest. Would you like to sit on the egg in my nest? The elephant laughed. <laughs> Why, of all silly things. I haven't feathers and I haven't wings. Me on your egg? Why, that doesn't make sense. Your egg is so small, ma'am, and I am so immense. Tut tut, answered Maisie. I know you're not small, but I'm sure you can do it. No trouble at all. Just sit on it softly. You're gentle and kind. Come, be a good fellow. I know you won't mind. I can't, said the elephant. Please, begged the bird. I won't be, I won't be gone sir, long, sir. I give you my word. I'll hurry right back. Why, I never, I'll never be missed. Oh, very well, the elephant said. Since you insist. You want a vacation, go fly off and take it. I'll sit on your egg and I'll try not to break it. I'll stay and be faithful, I mean what I say. Toodaloo, sang out Maisie and she fluttered away. Hmm, the first thing to do, murmured Horton, let's see. The first thing to do is to prop up this tree and make it much stronger. That has to be done before I get on it. I weigh, I weigh a ton. Then carefully, tenderly, gently he crept up the trunk to the nest where the little egg slept. Then Horton the elephant smiled. <clears throat> now, now that's that. And he sat, and he sat, and he sat, and he sat. And he sat all that day, and he kept that egg warm, and he sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured and it lightened. It thundered, it rumbled. It isn't much fun, the poor elephant grumbled. I wish he'd come back, cause I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that Maisie bird doesn't forget. But Maisie, by this time, was far beyond reach, enjoying the sunshine, sunset, sunshine way off in Palm Beach. And having such fun, such a wonderful rest, decided she'd never go back to her nest. So Horton kept sitting there day after day, and soon it was autumn, the leaves blew away. And then came the winter, the snow and the sleet, and icicles hung from his trunk and his feet. But Horton kept sitting and said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I mean what I said and I said what I meant, an elephant's faithful 100%. So poor Horton sat there, the horrible, the whole winter through. And then came the springtime with troubles anew. His, his friends gathered round and they shouted with glee. Look at Horton the, Horton the elephant up in a tree. They taunted. They teased him. They yelled, how absurd. Old Horton the elephant thinks he's a bird. They laughed and they laughed and they all ran away. And Horton was lonely. He wanted to play. But he sat on the egg and continued to say, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, an elephant's faithful 100%.
No matter what happens, this egg must be tended. But poor Horton's troubles were far, far from ended. For while Horton sat there, so faithful, so kind, three hunters came sneaking up softly behind. He heard the men's footsteps. He churned with the start. Three rifles were aiming right straight at his heart. Did he run? He did not. Horton stayed on that nest. He held his head high and he threw out his chest. And he looked at those hunters as much as to say, Shoot if you must, but I won't run away. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful 100%. But the men didn't shoot. Much to Horton's surprise, they dropped their three guns and they stared with white eyes. Look, they all shouted, can such a thing be? An elephant sitting on top of a tree. It's strange, it's amazing, it's wonderful, new. No, don't shoot him, we'll catch him. That's just what we'll do. Let's take him alive. Why, he's terribly funny. We'll sell him back home to the circus for money. And the first thing he, and the first thing he knew, they had built a big wagon with ropes on the front for the pullers to drag on. They dug up the, his tree and they put it inside with Horton so sad that he practically cried. We're off, the men shouted, and off they all went with Horton and Happy 100%. Up out of the jungle, up into the sky, up over the mountains 10,000 feet high, then down, down the mountains, and down to the sea went the cart, the elephant, egg, nest, and tree. Then out of the wagon and onto a ship, over the ocean, and oh what a trip, rolling and tossing, splashed with the spray, and Horton said day after day after day, I meant what I said and I said what I meant, but oh am I seasick 100%. After bobbing around for two weeks like a cork, they landed in la at last in a town of New York. All ashore, the men shouted. And down with the lurch went Horton the elephant still on his perch. Tied on a board that could just scarcely hold him. Bump! Horton landed. And the, then the men sold him. Sold to a circus. Then week after week, they showed him to people at 10 cents a peak. They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Waikiki, and Washington too. To Daytona, Ohio, St. Paul, Minnesota, to Wichita, Kansas to Drake, North Dakota, and everywhere thousands of folks flocked to see and laughed at the elephant up in a tree. Poor Horton grew sadder the farther he went, but he said as he sat in a hot noisy tent, I meant what I said and I said what I meant, an elephant's faithful 100%. Then one day the circus show happened to reach a town way down south, not far from Palm Beach. And dwaddling along way up up in the sky, who, of all people, should chance to fly by? But that old good-for-nothing bird, runaway Maisie, still on vacation and still just as lazy. And spying the flags and the tents just below, she sang out, What fun! Why? I'll go to a show. And she swooped from the clouds through an open tent door. Good gracious! gasped Maisie. I've seen you before. Poor Horton looked up with his face white as chalk. He started to speak, but before he could talk, there rang out the noisiest ear-splitting squeaks from the egg that had sat on that he sat on for forty-one weeks. A thumping, a bumping, a wild, a live scratching. My egg! Shouted Horton. My egg! Why it's hatching? But it's mine! Screamed the bird. When she heard the egg crack, the work was all done. Now she wanted it back. It's my egg, she sputtered. You stole it from me. Get out of, get off of my nest and get out of my tree. Poor Horton backed down with a sad, heavy heart. But at that very instant, the egg burst apart. And out of the pieces of red and white shell, from the egg that he'd sat on so long and so well, Horton the elephant saw something whiz. It had ears, and a tail, and a trunk dressed like his. And the people came shouting, "With all, what's all this about? 
They looked and they stared with their eyes popping out. Then they cheered and they cheered and they cheered more and more. They'd never seen anything like it before. My goodness, my gracious, they shouted, my word. It's something brand new. It's an elephant bird. And it should be. It should be. It should be like that. Because Horton was faithful and he sat and he sat. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. And they sent him home happy 100%. Horton hatches the egg by Dr. Seuss. We hope everybody's still practicing good hygiene at home. We've been using a song here during our story times that the children have come to enjoy. It's the hand washing song, sung to the tune of Ferris Doctor, and it goes, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Scrub them all together, scrub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Good job. Hi everybody. Now we're going to read Click Clack Surprise. <clears throat> Written by Doreen Cronin, illustrated by Betsy Lewin, and published by Athenium Books for Young Readers. Click Clack Surprise! It is a very big day on the farm. A cake is baking, streamers are streaming, and mice are floating past the window. The invitations have been delivered. You're invited to Little Duck's birthday party under the maple tree. Games, cake, and prizes. Pin the tail on the donkey. Cancelled by donkey. Duck Duck Goose. Cancelled by Goose. Steal the bacon. Cancelled by anonymous request. Everybody wants to look their best for Little Duck's party. Duck takes a long, hot bubble bath to look his best. He rub-a-dubs, rub-a-dubs, rub-a-dubs clean, and walks on over to the maple tree. Little Duck watches, and then rub-a-dubs too. The sheep need a trim to look their best. They snippity-clip, snippity-clip, snippity-clip clean, and walk on over to the maple tree. Little Duck watches, and then snippity-clips too. The cat wants to look her best. She slurp-alerps, slurp-alerps, slurp-alerps clean, and walks on over to the maple tree. Little Duck watches, and then slurp-alerps too. The chickens take a dust bath to look their best. They shimmy shake, shimmy shake, shimmy shake clean and walk on over to the maple tree. Little Duck watches and then shimmy shakes too. The pigs need a mud bath to feel their best. They squish and squash, squish and squash, squish and squash clean and walk on over to the maple tree. Little duck watches and then squishes and squashes too. I don't know. The cows like themselves just the way they are. No rub a dubbing, no snippity clipping, no slurp a lurping, no shimmy shaking, and no squish and squashing. They walk on over to the maple tree. Farmer Brown frosts the cake, lights the candles, puts on his best hat, and walks on over to the maple tree. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to... Ew! A birthday surprise for everyone under the maple tree. Oh, but it doesn't matter to them. Dirty or not, he's still family. Click clack surprise. Thank you everybody for joining us for another virtual story time. Just as a reminder, parents, we are back to doing in-person story times, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, all at 1030. So please stop in and see us here at the Canyon City Public Library. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.